Hi everyone, and welcome. Today, a month after the release of the IMF's Fragile and Conflict-Affected States Strategy, we want to highlight the importance of meeting the needs of fragile states when it comes to technical assistance and training. And we'll share some recent accomplishment with a focus on Somalia and how the new IMF strategy can be a game changer. As you may have seen, the IMF has decided to expand its field presence in fragile states to enhance its support for institutional building, ensure country-specific technical assistance, and strengthen coordination with development partners. The IMF will also increase resources to provide capacity development in core areas of the IMF expertise to help fragile states get on the path towards stability. Today, we will primarily focus on two of these core areas, economic statistics and fiscal policies, while also highlighting some major milestones achieved with Somalia. Today, I am joined by Mr. Jafar Mohammed Ahmed, Somalia's Director General of Revenue, joining us remotely, Mr. Sharmarke Farah, Director General of Somalia's National Bureau of Statistics, also joining us remotely, my colleague, Vincent Kupaizan, Senior Economist in the IMF Fiscal Affairs Department, here with us today in the studio, as well as my colleague, Sajin Don, Deputy Division Chief in the Statistics Department. So Jin, let's start with you today. What are the main challenges facing fragile states when it comes to economic statistics and how do we respond to them? Thank you, Noha, for the introduction. One of the key objectives for IMF engagement in fragile state is to support these countries to build strong institutions. In this process, timely and high quality data are critically important to guide policy design and implementation. Good data are also wanted by the public, capital markets, and international community. Despite these needs, many fragile states face constraints in improving their statistics. Among them, the top three are inadequate resources, lack of source data, and weak interagency cooperation. For instance, about 80% of fragile states do not have sufficient resources for produced statistics and the percentage of fragile states suffering from weak interagency cooperation is more than three times of that non-fragile state. In line with IMF priority, the number of missions to fragile state by the IMF statistics department increased by 30% between 2016 and 2019. Despite a temporary decline due to COVID-19, the number of missions to fragile state rose again in 2021 many thanks to the remote delivery. So, from hundreds of missions we delivered during the last few years, what can we learn from statistical capacity development in fragile state? Here are the three most important things I would like to highlight today. First, field presence is very important. Although about two-thirds of statistical missions to fragile state were delivered by regional capacity development centers, their continuous engagement on the ground help to provide long-term support and to better understand the local context, which often is a major implementation risk in fragile state. The second most important thing to know about statistical de capacity development is its tailored and phased approach based on a country's degree of fragility. For fragile state currently experiencing conflict or disaster, IMF engagement may take the form of virtual or off-site support. During the early phase after country recover from conflict or disaster, hands-on training is a key to build local capacity. Other focuses during this period include establishing basic reporting systems, building source data, and produce statistics rely on administrative data. As recovers advance and a fragile state become more stable, the focus shifts towards widening coverage and improving data frequency and timeliness. For example, annual GDP would be supplemented by quarterly GDP estimate. External sector statistics would complement customs data with surveys to estimate the informal flow. Finally, as a country emerges from the fragile state group, IMF can continue to support the country in produce more advanced statistics. Now, the third important thing to know about the statistical capacity development in fragile state is that 
it requires innovation, a lot of innovations. For instance, traditional survey for collecting source data require extensive resources, something many fragile states may not have right now. To overcome this hurdle, leverage big data as a supplement to official statistics has become increasingly popular. Some recent examples in this area, including our support to countries in using value-added tax data to compile GDP estimate and use ocean vessel traffic data to produce real-time trade estimate. Now, another important innovation in statistics capacity development is the rapid expansion of online learning options Although this trend has started before the pandemic, it really took off when in-person delivery was paused during the pandemic. Thanks to this innovation, the IMF now offers a rich menu of online learning options on statistical topics, including full length of course in different languages, modular and micro-learning videos on particular topics, and blended learning, which combines different learning models to maximize learning efficiency. After a general overview of our statistical capacity development, now let's take a look at the case of Somalia. Since 2012, Somalia has been recovering from more than two decades of civil war that caused severe damage to its social and economic infrastructures. Helping Somalia to improve its statistics has required a very collaborative effort. The IMF Statistical Department collaborated extensively with development partners in particular with the World Bank and the Statistical Sweden in the area of GDP. This collaborative approach leverages each institution's strengths and reduces the pressure on local absorption capacity. The statistical capacity development in Somalia also followed a very carefully tailored and phased approach as we discussed earlier. Started with training followed by basic data sets and then move on to more sophisticated topics. This collaborative and tailored approach has led to impressive progress in recent years, including a single official GDP estimate by expenditure, consumer price index with updated weights, and fiscal statistics for central government. Building on the progress, the authorities are continuing to improve their official statistics, including the work on a national consumer price index, the expansion of the fiscal data coverage, beyond the central government and the physical financial sector soundness indicator. Finally, with improved data availability, the authorities are working with the IMF on the subscription of the enhanced general data dissemination system, eGDDS. This would help Somali to further enhance data transparency. Now, to summarize, capacity development provided by the IMF statistical department has followed a tailored and phased approach with very high field presence, innovative offerings, and close collaboration with the development partner. It has in the past and will continue in the future to play a key role in helping fragile states strengthen their institutions and improve macro policy making. We are honored to be part of this global effort. Thank you. Back to you, Noha. Thank you, Sajin. I would like now to invite Vincent to focus on the challenges faced on the fiscal side. Vincent? Thank you, Noah. Well, the challenges observed in the fiscal area are similar to what Sejin just described. As you can see from the left chart, while revenue mobilization is a priority for fragile states, they struggle to generate the resources needed to address the pressing developmental needs of their population. During 2000 and 2020, the tax to GDP ratio in fragile states was an average of 13% versus 19% in non-fragile states. In addition, as illustrated by the two right charts, the sources of revenue in fragile states are barely diversified. Given the security and the capacity issues that face, these countries tend to rely on external grants and easy to access tax basis. Collection efforts focus on large taxpayers and easy collection points such as customs. To help the fragile state address these challenges, the Fiscal Affairs Department has tailored its capacity development support to the state of fragility of the recipient countries. 
For countries that are experiencing major insecurity or political instability and for which capacity development provision is not possible because of security concerns or inaccessibility, the approach is to wait until conditions allow for a direct engagement. The IMF supports countries at this stage through video conferencing and off-site missions, as was the case of Afghanistan, Liberia, Mali, Somalia and Yemen. When security conditions improve, the primary focus in the areas of revenue policy and administration is on the design of simple taxes that require low administrative capacity. For example, it's crucial to set up basic administrative procedures for the tax and customs administration that can have the highest revenue impact in a short time. On the expenditure side, the focus of revenue strategies during this early stage is on establishing basic public financial management systems. For countries that have moved out of immediate fragility, the objective is moved to modernize fiscal institutions incrementally through medium-term revenue and expenditure strategies. One important reform in this stage is the introduction or strengthening of broad-based consumption taxes, notably VAT. A key challenge is to start building the capacity for the headquarters offices of the Tax and Customs Administration to define basic strategies, monitor core operations, and oversee support functions such as information technology systems and human resources. Establishing large taxpayer offices and medium-sized taxpayer offices is another important consideration. On the expenditure side, the focus is on establishing a medium-term strategy to build fiscal institutions. Let me briefly discuss the case of Somalia. Somalia exhibits the main characteristics of a fragile and conflict-affected state and has its own specificities, including federalism, security challenges, and climate shocks. Against that background, the Fiscal Affairs Department has tailored its capacity development support to meet the country's specific needs. A key feature of this support is the adoption of an integrated approach combining public financial management, tax policy, and revenue administration. In the area of public financial management, Somalia is now able to prepare its annual and supplementary budgets and has a cash management unit in place. In the area of tax policy, Somalia has adopted modern revenue administration law and is working on its income tax law. On revenue administration, the foundational elements of tax and customs administration have been established. The largest contributors to the budgets have been brought into the tax system through a large and medium-sized taxpayer office established in Mogadishu. And the basic tax administration functions have been developed. These initial reforms are expected to be deployed in other large cities as security improves. What are the key lessons learned during our work with the fragile and conflict-affected states? Helping the fragile states build their own fiscal capacity is exciting. Adopting an approach tailored to the specific circumstances of the country is important. In the case of Somalia, an initial focus of revenue administration reforms on the capital city has helped progress rapidly and achieve some quick wins. Integrated capacity development combining several but complementary work streams helps. Good understanding and support from the authorities have been critical. We are innovating. Our next capacity development strategy will devote significant resources to fragile states. In the meantime, we have developed several online courses that can be accessed on our websites. The address will be shared with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vincent. Let's now connect with Somalia, where we are honored to be joined by Heads of Agencies for Revenue and Statistics. Mr. Ahmed, could you share some of the key priorities and achievements of Somalia in the field of fiscal modernization? 
Thank you, Nawa. I, I, I think um, what Mr. Vincent has alluded to is, 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 is what has inspired. Uh, the key challenge that we faced from the outset was the humanitarian crisis. There's a famine every year that comes, uh, locks the infestations, uh, displacements that do happen, and the weak uh, institutions, and then the public uh, trust deficit uh, because of the civil war and, 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 and coming back for the government. Uh, people are expecting more services to be delivered uh, than the government is capable of. So with, with the help of IMF, what we have achieved is uh, uh, full-fledged reforms that have taken place from the tax policy perspective, as well as the tax, uh, tax administration and legislative framework. Uh, for, the, for the tax policy, we created the tax policy unit, built the capability, uh, analytical capability, and as a result, they've reduced uh, you know, uh, annual um, reports, um, tax exemption reports, uh, tax base um, reports, and anal analytical work on the tax base. And all these contributed uh, to increase the collections and put the large and medium taxpayers uh, into the tax base. Uh, from the tax administration um, and, and side, uh, we have uh, created a large and medium taxpayers office, uh, introduced the tax identification number and the tax compliance certificates. Uh, those all enhanced uh, the credibility of the system as well as uh, uh, enrichment of the tax base. So uh, with the help of IMF uh, technical assistance, uh, we built the capability of our audit program. And now we are envisioning how we can automate all the processes of, of, of tax administration and, and, and both the customs and the inland. And, and, and if I pose there, um, moving forward, what we expect is, is, is to have a medium, uh, medium term revenue strategy, uh, as well as full fledged automation system uh, that is capable of collecting an uh, information and, 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 and share uh, with the taxpayer administration, with, with the tax administration. Thank you and over to you, Mark. Mr. Farah, Somalia recently released GDP estimates, which was a major accomplishment. Congratulations. Could you share with us more information on the significance of the country's work on improving economic statistics? Uh, thank you, first of all, for take, uh, giving us the opportunity to share our experience. Since the establishment of the Somali National Bureau of Statistics in 2020 as an independent uh, statistics agency, it has achieved and is still in the midst of many significant initiatives aligned with fulfilling the purpose of informing Somalia's critical policy decisions while operating in a challenging fiscal and resource environment. These include delivering ongoing data collection from Somalia's, Somalia to integrate household budget survey, which is currently underway and the 2019, 2019 Somalia Health and Demographic Survey, which was uh, essential for the socio-economic planning of the country, as well as continuing to deliver uh, the Bureau's transformation program, with particular focus on enabling government, businesses, academia, and the public to access reliable data for decision making, which will ultimately enhance the well-being of the Somali people. These surveys certainly provide vital information on economics as well as other socio-economic statistics such as consumption, inequality, poverty, which will enable our government to make better economic decisions. The expansion of the consumer price index into all urban areas of Somalia will also provide an important privacy link information, especially for federal states, information that is fundamental in the assessment of the rapid changes in cost living at the moment. The Bureau is also established, has established a poverty unit in order to make poverty data accessible on more frequent basis. These initiatives will certainly enhance the profile of the Bureau as it aims to be a leading and reliable statistical agency in the region. Building on our stakeholder relationship has been an ongoing priority to ensure to continue to deliver relevant, trusted, and objective statistics that we can that can be constru 
considered trusted and innovative by, by, by our partners. The outputs of the Economic Statistics Director of the Bureau are widely followed and utilized by government, international agencies, researchers, academia, the private sector, and non-governmental organizations. While the regular outputs of the department's GDP, statistics, and CPI has long been fundamental to the Bureau's core line of products, since 2020, several major initiatives related to the improvement of national accounts and economic statistics in general, which was largely made possible through the assistance of the IMF, World Bank, African Development Bank, and the statistics in Sweden, as was mentioned by my colleague earlier, Zaytan. These, these activities have served to improve the effectiveness of the Bureau and its relationship with its user, while simultaneously providing an opportunity to highlight the important statistics, uh, the importance of the statistics through a wide range ranging medium. With this recent progress in data availability to users, we I think we have reached the stage where Somalia can officially subscribe to the IMF's EGDDS. We have thus far shared all the necessary documents for this report for, that was required for this uh, uh, platform. The key objective of this initiative is to produce a fully operational national summary data page, NSDP, supported by modern technology which will provide users to have access to access at the recommended EGDDS data categories. Before I conclude, let me acknowledge once again our development partners for helping us to realize these critical accomplishments, particularly the IMF, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the Statistics Sweden, for their, for their support to the advancement of the statistical capacity in Somalia and also assisting the Bureau during its critical capacity is strengthening phase. I would like to take this opportunity to wish the distinguished delegates of uh, a productive and successful spring meeting for 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Farah. Thank you for joining us during this last capacity development talk of the 2022 spring meetings. Join us next month for a conference co-organized with the United Kingdom, where we will discuss the implications of the IMF's new strategy for fragile and conflict-affected states in more details. Stay tuned for more information. Meanwhile, I invite you to visit us on imf.org backslash capdev for more information on our technical assistance and training activities. Finally, we would like to thank our development partners who support about half of the IMF's capacity development work. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to our panelists. Thank you. Guys. Thank That's you. Great. Thank That's you. Nice to be here.